Good morning. Hello. Oh, I'm in it also. You good, can morning. Say good morning. Morning. <laughs> so I woke up like 30 minutes ago. I wanted to say before starting the video that my skin looks like this. I, I said this in my last video. It's like I always have excuses. No, but. <laughs> My skin looks like this because I did a facial on myself last night. So I was doing extractions and like, this is what we got. We're on our way to the gym. It is 7.38 a.m. in the morning. We're late. Yeah, we're late because of you. I completely forgot to film it, but this morning when I woke up, I always have a glass of water with half a lemon and one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. The reason why, I mean, there's so many benefits to it. It aids in your digestion, obviously, so therefore it helps for weight loss. But the main reason why I like to use it is because I get very hungry. I would say like 20 minutes after I wake up and then it's very hard for me to work out hungry. So when I drink a glass of lemon with apple cider vinegar, that suppresses my hunger for like two hours, honestly. So that's why I really, really like it. I feel like I get the best workouts in the morning before I eat, before I have any food in my stomach. And also you automatically are burning fat before you eat because you're like technically in a fasted state since you haven't eaten in a lot of hours. So anyways, so we're on our way to the gym. <laughs> I'm gonna do booty and triceps today. I feel like I haven't worked out my arms in a long time. Stop, you're making me nervous. <laughs> I feel like I haven't worked out my triceps in a while, so. Booty oh, and yeah, triceps. Yeah, so that's the, a little bit of the rundown of our morning. And then when, you know, I go make breakfast, I'm gonna show you guys and everything like that. But yeah, let's go. Okay guys, so I'm back in my apartment and I'm about to make breakfast. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm making, but basically I eat the same exact thing every single morning because I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I just really, really like the flavor of that uh, breakfast. It's basically scrambled eggs with tomato, turkey slices, green onion, and I put a few spices on it. I put cheese. I'm gonna show you guys everything I put, and I like it with avocado, and then I have my little keto-friendly coffee, so that's basically what I eat every single day. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna be using half a tomato. I normally get Roma tomatoes, but Trader Joe's ran out, so I'm using this other kind that I don't know the name of. And then one green onion. I'm gonna be using two eggs mixed with heavy whipping cream. And I'm gonna be using four turkey slices. Just wanted to tell you guys how much of each ingredient I use, and it's the same thing every day. And yeah, I'm gonna get started. Okay, so when I make my eggs, I use avocado oil. And I don't really measure anything because I like doing keto the easy way. So I just kind of eyeball how much I think I should put in. And also my coffee's done. So this is a stove top espresso maker. If you guys know of these, Cubans use them to make their coffee. My coffee's already done. Well, you guys can't see, but it's already done. I'll show you how I make it in a, in a little. I'm done cutting everything, so I'm just gonna put it on the pan. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that sit for a little just because I like for the tomatoes and the green onions and the turkey slices to get a little grilled. I don't know if that's the term. I'm not a professional chef or anything. I'm just gonna whisk these two eggs and put a little bit of heavy whipping cream in them because I just think it makes it taste so much better and also it's keto friendly, so better for you. Okay, so while the eggs are doing their thing, I'm gonna start to cut the avocado that I use. So I use one half avocado. And I always put Himalayan salt on top of it. Salt's very important on the keto diet and Himalayan salt is the best salt. So at the end, when the eggs are ready, I just like to leave one slice of monster cheese, mince, months, whatever, the, like the monster cheese, okay? One slice of monster cheese on top and I just let it melt and then I turn off the heat and just mix it all up. And also I'm gonna put some salt, pepper, and paprika on it. This is what my breakfast looks like. And the last thing that I do is I pour a crap ton of this on it because I'm obsessed with this and cannot live without it. So yeah, that's basically meal number one complete. So I'm gonna show you what I make for my 
go-to keto coffee lately so I grabbed this this is a wine glass but like I honestly don't have something cute like a mason jar so this is what we're gonna work with I use whipped cream as the first ingredient this is coconut whipped cream because as you guys can see it's keto that's my microwave it's keto friendly so I mean it doesn't have a high amount of fat but it only has two grams of carbs so that's very keto friendly you know being on keto it's kind of hard to find sweeteners so this just makes my coffee really creamy I really really like it so I just do like that after that my next ingredient is some ice then I put my coffee in it. The coconut whipped cream doesn't have a lot of sugar. Not that I need a lot of sugar, but it barely has it enough to make my coffee taste sweet. I do have to use another sweetener. I don't like stevia at all. The times that I've done like one teaspoon of um, raw cane sugar, it just really doesn't even taste in my coffee, so it's not even worth the four carbs. So I've been using this monk fruit sweetener. Initially, I had a hard time getting used to it. Honestly, it's because my coffee's so bitter my coffee is made from a Cuban coffee maker and like that is made for really really strong dark coffee like it doesn't play around and so with that it tastes the best with brown sugar so I really like the monk fruit sweetener if you use something like a Keurig or you just make regular coffee which I'm looking to get soon because especially with keto it's just really hard to have such strong coffee and I just haven't been able to get used to it so I use the coconut whipped cream and then I put one teaspoon of monk fruit sweetener so my coffee already has the monk fruit sweetener sweetener because I did it as soon as the coffee was ready so I'm just gonna and then the very last ingredient is coconut milk the whipped cream makes it creamy as well as the coconut cream it's iced and obviously I love iced coffee and look the whipped cream even though I put it at the top at the bottom um, it blends in a little and then it goes to the top so it's like this foamy top essentially so yeah that's my coffee you guys it's so good feel free to give it a try you can even do it like your own um, with regular sugar and see how you like that it's been quite the journey trying to find a coffee that I like on keto I feel like it's just been so difficult I feel like this is the right creaminess the right sweetness I think it's just like the perfect coffee I really like it so Okay, you guys, I'm not nasty. I know I haven't showered, but I've just been so busy with work all morning. It's, it's like 3 p.m. now. And I'm gonna eat lunch and shower right after. I do intermittent fasting like three to four times a week. Today, I'm not gonna be doing intermittent fasting, but basically when I do that, I'll have breakfast at like 1 p.m. instead. So I'll work out in the morning and like hold it out just drink lots of water and then I'll have dinner at like six or seven um, and I just drink a lot of water I don't really snack often I've kind of forced myself to get out of that habit and now I don't really feel like I need to so that's why I can like hold it out and just have like two meals a, a day when I do intermittent fasting but today's not one of those days today I'm gonna be having three meals so it's 3 p.m. I'm about to make a light lunch and yeah I'm about to show you guys so BRB okay so on the days that I don't fast this is typically what I make for lunch do you really have to make noise right now? Can you not? <laughs> so on the days that I don't in, uh, fast, do intermittent fasting, this is typically what I make for lunch. It's super simple to make, so I'll add some sort of protein here. Sometimes I do smoked salmon if it's not prosciutto, or I can do like tuna or something like that. I really like to do burrata cheese. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. My parents showed it to me and I think it's really good, but. When I went to the store, they didn't have burrata, so this is mozzarella, and it's just like like a slice that I cut. And then this over here is a mix. I get spinach and I get arugula individually, and then I make like a little mix. And then I made like my own dressing, so it has Himalayan salt, pepper, extra virgin olive oil, because extra virgin olive oil is really, really good for anti-inflammatory. I did half a lemon, and then one tablespoon of mayo. That's like the dressing that I do kind of, you know, for keto. This is basically my lunch. It literally takes me like five minutes to do it. So it's super simple. All right guys, so I'm about to cook dinner and this is one of my favorite dinners to cook. These are plant-based patties. Honestly, originally I was not a very big 
fan of eating plant-based when I started keto just because I imagined that it would have so many carbs. But these are so bomb, you guys. So it has 18 grams of fat, right? 20 grams of protein. And then when you look at the carbs, obviously because it has fiber, you cancel that out. So then it only has three net carbs. And that is perfect for keto. Also, I'm gonna use some cheese for the patty. For vegetables, I'm going to be having baby broccoli. This is honestly my favorite vegetable of all time. I discovered it once I started keto. I didn't even know this existed. This is so freaking good. I'm gonna use avocado oil again. I'm not going to measure it. Essentially, this is how much I use for a patty. The patty is not the only thing that's gonna be cooked here. I'm also going to put the baby broccoli in here. So this is like the oil for the whole thing. But on keto, you obviously can be generous with fat. I'm just gonna show you guys really quick all the seasonings that I use for just generally like all my dinners that I make. I use it for all my vegetables. Um, if I make fish, if I make chicken, if I make the vegan patties, like, this is just my go-to. I know I said in the lunch that Himalayan salt is the best kind, but I bought this before I bought Himalayan salt and it's huge and I don't like to waste food, so I'm just finishing it. So I use sea salt, I use black pepper, oregano. I use the everything but the bagel sesame. This is the bomb. If you have not tried this, you need this in your life. You freaking need it. Like no exceptions. It's so good. Garlic powder and onion salt. I'm going to use that for both the broccoli and for the patty. I'm cooking it in the same pan because honestly, this is my favorite pan. It just cooks really good. So I had to wait a little bit on the patty just because if I, you know, it was frozen and if I put these in at the same time, they get way overcooked. You don't want to cook your vegetables too, too long because then they'll get too soft and you lose a lot of the nutrients. A big reason why I keep it on low heat is because when you cook on high heat, yes, your food will be done faster, but your vegetables will lose a lot of the nutrients. Whereas if you cook for longer on low heat, your, your vegetables will keep a lot of the nutrients. Okay, you guys, so this is basically done. So I'm just gonna put a slice of cheese to just melt on top. I already put all the spices as you guys can see. This is the finished meal. Oh my God, it looks so bomb. Oh yes. I love it with chipotle mayo. Okay, you need you need to go, sis. No, 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 no. And it has zero carbs, so that's absolutely perfect. And 12 grams of fat, so that's amazing. And not to mention it tastes so good. Yeah, it's like non-GMO, gluten-free, soy and canola-free, all this uh, made with 100% avocado oil. So I'm just gonna put some of this on top of the patty and that's essentially my last meal of the day. I'm also gonna show you guys a little hot chocolate that I make myself for keto that I have almost every single night. It really depends how hungry I am after dinner, like if I still have space for it or if I'm super full. I'm going to be making the little hot chocolate drink before bed. Basically what I use is coconut cream, um, almond milk, cocoa powder, and stevia. I use two to three tablespoons of the coconut cream. This is unsweetened. It's very important to get that because they sell at the grocery store two different coconut creams and one of them is used for mixed drinks. And then I use 10 to 12 ounces of almond milk, two to three tablespoons of cocoa powder, and then like five to six drops of stevia. I'm gonna just put it in my blender and put it in the microwave so that it can be, you know, all warm like a hot chocolate. Normally I like to stick to two tablespoons instead of three and two tablespoons instead of three as well. I wanted to explain a big reason why I have this drink is because it's happened to me a few times. It's happened to some people that I've helped start keto where after they have dinner, they feel like they want to have a little treat like dark chocolate or something like that. And you know how chocolate, I forget the name of it, but there's something in chocolate that makes you feel really good after you eat it. And it's not the sugar, obviously. So if you're just having like cocoa, that helps enough. This little drink, it's not too sweet. I've honestly with keto gotten used to not having sugar and I kind of love it because I feel 
feel like when you're on any other diet, it's really hard to stick to like no carbs and stick to no sugar or like really low carb, really low sugar intake. It's very hard, but I feel like on keto, because you're not having enough to give your body a reaction out of it. This has, you know, I showed you guys all the ingredients. So at the end of the night, when I have it after dinner, it just gives me that same feeling that chocolate gives me. And I feel like it just keeps me really satiated. It's so yummy. And yeah, so it only has a few drops of stevia, so it doesn't really taste that sweet. But because of keto, like I just, I feel like my palate has improved a lot where I can taste a lot of flavors. I love this. Drink. It feels like a treat even without being a treat because I'm staying on keto. I'm still on track I'm still you know doing what I'm supposed to that's basically everything that I have in a day I would really really appreciate the support if you guys did enjoy watching this video to like comment and subscribe That way I know that you guys want to be friends with me. So that is it for this video and I will see you guys in my next video Bye